first up, yeah, same it's a revision. That's right. We've got an update to our e-ink bonnet. Uh, it's the same size, the same kind of display. It looks the same, but it's a new chipset. Now has the SSD 1680. The previous chipset was discontinued. What does this mean? Um, just check our example code. You'll want to select SSD 1680 as the chip that it's communicating with. If you're using our old code, uh, the code is the firmware is different. So you'll have to recompile or, or uh, re-upload your code for any e-ink bonnet projects. But we have support for it, and it's just like one line change. Very easy. Next up, wires. We've got some wires. So um, for some kits, we like to sometimes include a small number of wires. So this is 10 uh, extension cables. You've got one of every color of the rainbow. You've got little male plug headers on one end. You've got female socket headers on the other. It's about 12 inches long. It's very petite. It's only a couple bucks. Great when you just want to like make something longer. Okay, next up. Okay, next up, we've got, by popular demand, these reverse mount uh, NeoPixels. These are uh, SK6812 NeoPixels, and they've got like the legs bent out. You see, like usually they're bent under, but they're bent out, which I thought was a cool hack, to turn these into um, reverse mount NeoPixels, as shown here on the NeoKey. So um, what you do is you cut a hole in the PCB, and it comes on a little piece of tape. You put it so the LED shines through the PCB, and now you've got a reverse mount NeoPixel, so the top is perfectly flat. Uh, a couple of reasons you might want this. One, again, you want you need a totally flat PCB here because there's a there's a thing that goes on top, and you don't want it to be in the way. Also, can simplify your builds because you only need a single side assembly. So I can show on the overhead what this looks like because it's being used in a new product. So this is the reverse mount NeoPixel. This is the reverse mount NeoPixel here. And then this is what it looks like. So as I twist this, you can see it's it's a nice bright new pixel. It's just like any other, but uh, it's got those big flat legs. And just don't forget, you need to have the cutout. This isn't like some LEDs where they they have like a J lead and they sit flat against the PCB. These you actually need the little square cutout. So just make sure you do that. Uh, if you need a footprint, check out uh, our NeoKey PCB on GitHub. You can use that as uh, just just delete everything else, and you can get the footprint and the cutout that we've used. All right, next up, you have something that's wet and you want it to be dry, or you have something dry and you want it to be wet. Well, we have a very simple and expensive water sensor that you can use. Uh, here I've got it hooked up to um, an Adafruit Funhouse. I also have the same demo I'll show on the overhead. It's very simple, and I got one of these, and I'm like, this actually works really well. Like, I don't have anything to improve on it. Uh, you give it three to, four, three to five volts power, connects to ground, and then there's a signal output. Now, I will say... In theory, this is an analog output. So you see, like, as I put my slightly damp human finger on it, um, this gauge goes up. But if you actually, you know, let's say I have a little bowl of water here. Okay, water bowl. And then I put some, oh, sorry, hold on. I put a little bit of water on here. You see it quickly goes all the way to the max. You see even, like, a little bit of water Touching these pads uh, makes them contact and it maxes out the voltage. So even though technically this is an analog voltage sensor, really it's digital. It's it's zero or it's one. Like it's nothing or it's maxed. Um, but it works quite well. And then, you know, you, you really have to dry it off. But then once it's dried off, um, it goes back down to zero. And then you want to set it off again. There you go. Okay. Water detecting. It's working. And next it's step. wet. The star of the show, besides our community, our customers, our team at Adafruit, the data is... Okay, we've got finally, after many years, this is quite an old design, but I finally got it out. It's the Seesaw I2C encoder. So these are rotary encoders, which everyone loves, but they're kind of a pain to use. But I put them on a board with a Seesaw chip, a SAMD09, uh, even a NeoPixel on there and a little bit of support circuitry and now you can plug it in and chain them over I2C. It's a very easy way to add a rotary encoder. Now this actually come, it comes just as the PCB solder on your rotary encoder. We might have a version that's pre-assembled later but basically you can connect up to eight because there's uh, three address pins on the back. Just select, you know, just solder close a different uh, jumper set for each one. Here's a demonstration of having three of them um, connected up. But it's like, if you want to have a rotary encoder, it's like often very challenging to do. Um, I mean, you can do it, but you have to deal with timers and pin interrupts and all that. This is our I2C, it works with Arduino, it works with CircuitPython, it works with Python. Very, very easy to use. So I can show on the overhead. 
my little demo. Okay, so I've got here, uh, this is my Feather M4 and I've got an OLED. And then, you know, as I twist this, you can see this is just reading the number from here. All the, the pulse management and debouncing and even the NeoPixel timing stuff, that's all done over I2C using a couple commands. Um, on the back, you can even see there's this, this little LED here that's... Um, that goes off every time there is a movement, either a twist or a, a button press. Oh, yeah, if, you, if I press the button, you can see P for press. So um, it's kind of all in one. It's nice one inch by one inch. Um, because rotor encoders rotate around all the way, like they don't have a stop, that's why it's at 45 degrees, so it would fit nicely in the PCB and not get in the way of anything. Um, but it doesn't matter because once you put the knob on, you can't tell that it's angled. There's an interrupt output again if you don't want to uh, pull I2C because it's constantly asking I2C every 50 milliseconds, hey, is there any new data? But you can also use the interrupt pin if you want. And then, um, you know, use it with anything with a STEM EQT connector or I2C for very easy, very fast rotary encoder connectivity. It works with any rotary encoder with or without a switch. I meant to like the switch. But and want at switch. a great price, compare. Yes. Go out there and compare. It's only a couple bucks. And then uh, if people really like these, we can maybe offer a version that has a rotor encoder already soldered in. But we wanted to get these out to people real fast. And also, yeah. some people like detents, and some people don't like detents, and some people want 10 yeah. detents per rotation, some like 24. Pick and choose your favorite. Um, but I'm really psyched because I've always loved rotor encoders, and I've always hated how hard they are to use. Every chip is a little bit different. Uh, CircuitPython makes it really easy. Uh, this demo's an Arduino, and it was a breeze. It only took a few minutes to get this demo together. That's your problem.